Hello, this is Mark from excelofthegrid.com and in this video, we're looking at the fastest way to create a step chart in Excel. If you want to work along with this video, then download the example file and there are links in the descriptions box below. So once you've done that, if you're ready, let's get started. A step chart is used to show data that changes at specific points. It remains consistent until the next change then occurs. It's not a default chart type in Excel, but I wanted to show you how to create a step chart in Excel using the easiest and fastest method. Interest rates set by central banks across the world are a great example of when we should use a step chart. Here on the screen, I have the interest rate set by the Bank of England for the last 10 years. So let's just create a line chart for this. I'll select all the data, then click insert. And then from the line chart section, I will select a line chart. Just move that into place. Now delete the chart title. The problem is that using a line chart, it distorts the values. Because if we select any date between the two points in time, what we'll find is that the line gradually increases or decreases rather than being consistent. So therefore, a standard line chart is not a suitable way of representing interest rates set by a central bank. I want to show you two ways of changing this into a step chart. Now, the first method I'm about to show you is not the best method, so don't do this but it will illustrate how the process works so that you can appreciate how simple option two is. So let's have a look at option number one. If we look around the internet, this is the method that most blog posts or videos suggest. So what they say is that we take the original data, we copy it, then we duplicate that same data again. Then we can select the first date and the last value from the original range, right click, select delete, and then shift the cells up. And on that, I'll click OK. If we now point our chart source data to that new data, it will create a step chart. So I'll drag the rate there and the rate heading and finally the dates. There you go, we now have a step chart that correctly represents the data. So how does this work? Well, on each date when a change occurs, we actually have two data points. The first data point is the old value and the second data point is the new value. Because we have a date axis type, Excel will automatically plot these in a date order no matter which order the data is actually in. So by having two data points on each date, we can create this step chart effect. Okay, now let's move on to option number two. With option number two, we don't need to duplicate the data. Instead, we're going to use the comma, which from a range perspective is called the union operator. And this is a way that we can join multiple ranges together even if they're not contained all within the same range. So let me show you and you'll see exactly what I mean. Now I believe this is the fastest and easiest method of creating a step chart inside Excel. So I'll select the chart, right click and go to select data. I'll select my rate series and then click edit. For the series values, I'll clear all of that and just enter an equal sign. I'll then select all except the last value. Then I'll enter a comma and select all the values again. And then click OK. Over in the axis labels, I'll type an equals into the axis label range. And then I'll select all except the first date, enter a comma, and then select all the dates. And as soon as I click OK, and OK on the Select Data Source dialog box, you'll see we now have a step chart. And for that, we've not had to change any of our data format whatsoever. But wait, don't go yet. Here's the question. 
how do we use option two when we have an Excel table? Because tables are designed to automatically expand when we get new data. And as you can imagine, if we had a table of interest rates, over time it would expand as interest rates change. So let's have a look at that, how we can do option two with an Excel table. For this, we're going to need to create some named ranges. And these are going to include the index function. The index function returns a cell or a range from a selected range. And because it returns a range, it means that we can use the index function instead of a cell reference. Let me show you a quick example. So here in cell A14, I could enter equals index. Open bracket, I could select all of the dates and then enter number two, for example. And that should return the second row from the range A2 to A9. If we format that correctly, we'll see that it does. It returns that specific value. But it's not just returning that value, it's actually returning the cell reference which contains that value. So it's returning equals A3, and then A3 equals the 4th of August 2016 using UK dates. First, let's turn our data into a table. So I will select a cell within my data range and then click insert table. It has headers, so I'll click OK. And then I'm going to call my table data. Right, it's now time to create our named ranges. So in formulas, I'll come across to the name manager and then I'll click new to create my first named range. The first one I'm going to call values one and then in the refers to box, I'm going to say that it equals the index of the rate column from the data table. And from that column, I just want the first cell. So that will return the cell reference B2. I'll then enter a colon and enter another index function. From the same range, from the rate column of the data table again. I then want to return the second to last cell reference within that column. So I want to return the reference B8. So to do that, I'll use the rows function to count the number of rows in my rate column. I'll close that, I'll minus one, and then close the index. So the first index function will return the cell B2 and the second index function will return the cell B8. So we've created a range B2 colon B8. I'll click OK to close that. And now I will create another named range. I'll click New, and this one will be called Values2. Thankfully, this one's a lot easier. I can just select the entire rate column from the data table. And then I'll click OK. Now it's time to create the dates. So I'll call this dates one. And again, it'll be equals index. I want the entire column of date from the data table. And I want to start on the second item in that range. So cell A3. For that, I'll enter a two and then close a bracket. Then I'll enter a colon and use another index function. So index open bracket. I'll select the entire date column. And this time we want all of the rows in that same column. So because we're counting rows, this will then return the cell A9. So close the rows function with a bracket and close the index function. So the first index is returning A3 and the second index is returning A9. So that's the range, A3 to A9. I'll click OK on that. And then finally, we need dates two. Again, this one's much easier. So just equals the date column from the data table. 
I'll click OK on that and then close. OK, it's now time to use these named ranges with inside our chart. I'll right click on the series and go to select data. I'll click the rate and then go to edit. I'll clear everything out of the series values box. And then for this, I need to go into edit mode. So I'll press F2, which now means I can move backwards and forwards with the cursor inside the series values box. So I'll type equals. And now because it's a workbook level named range, it means I need to reference my named range by using the workbook name. This is the point I wish I'd selected a shorter workbook name, but there we go. So in single quotes, I'll enter 0067, create step chart in Excel, space hyphen space, start dot XLSX. I'll close that with a single quote and then enter an exclamation mark. Now I'm going to copy all of that apart from the equals because we'll be needing that again in a few seconds. Then my first named range was called values one. I'll enter a comma, paste my workbook name again, and enter values two, which is my second named range, and then click OK. Then for my axis labels, we'll do something very similar. Type equals, paste my workbook name, dates one, comma, paste my workbook name, dates two, and then click OK, and then enter OK again. So we now have a step chart. Let's just see what happens when we add new data into our table. Okay, so let's say on the 28th of February, 2022, the rates went up to 0.5%. And then let's say it's now the 31st of March, 2022. And again, we've got a closing rate of 0.5%. Actually, let's select a date that's further out so we can see that. There we go, our step chart now expands as our data expands in our Excel table. So thanks for watching. In this video, we've looked at how we can create a step chart using the most common method, a step chart using the fastest method, and also a step chart linked to an Excel table. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe like and comment, and I'll catch you next time.